Hey guys, so I hope you've enjoyed cringing with us in part one, because here's part two. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe, and we'll see you at the end of the video. So the session begins. We find Dirk Falcon floating in space on an automated shuttle. Victim asks whether she could act while she was being pulled away. GM says sure, and the story is rewound to where it ended last. She says that she will struggle, and GM calls for a brawl roll. She systematically beats her way through the crowd of orderlies and leans over to glance at her sheet. She had spent all of her points on four skills, sword, brawl, dodge and diplomacy, with a point or two dipped into small guns and acrobatics. She catches up and finds Dirk Falcon, rolling down the hallway on an automatic gurney. A force field protected gurney apparently, as we find out the moment she tries to rescue me. Victim has no choice but to follow me into the automated shuttle but not before retrieving her par sword and one of Tallfuck's arms, since apparently no one had picked those up in the hangar. So she stows away in the shuttle. GM asked Friend a few times if he would do anything about this, and he had been saying no the first few times, retroactively providing medical attention to Tallfuck to keep him from bleeding out for a shit ton of money. <laughs> then he installed the cyber arms, then proceeds to stow away in the shuttle too. So we fast forward to the automated shuttle nearing Planet Eve. Dirk Falcon awakes from his stun coma to see some friendly faces. At this time, Snively, who had left for a bit, came back with a subway. <laughs> <laughs> GM filled him in and decides that he's coming after us to uphold space law. His character is a surly rape convict, by the way, <laughs> who was punished with joining the most elite space police force for his rape crimes. That's not a... That's not a punishment. If anything, that's a good word for yeah. the sleepy McLeap face. It's going to put him in worse situations waiting to yeah. sleep home. He passed a few notes to the GM and role-played his character getting backed up from tall fuck, who's just fine and dandy and doesn't seem too pissed about being nearly murdered. So now we've been chased and can't do anything about it because that would be metagaming. In this post, I'll elaborate more on the situation at the table. So far, to his credit, GM was not as bad as you guys make him out to be. He has not actually tried any shenanigans and lets our roles avoid shit, albeit grudgingly. He certainly railroads marginally and GM PCs liberally, but the fetish fuel is unforgivable. Yeah, it fucking yeah. is unforgivable. It's awkward as fuck to sit there taking notes to relay back to you guys. GM keeps giving us a disgusting, conspiratory grin as if he's on to us. It'd be fucking hilarious if he had saw the post. <laughs> Knowing that we're here for more tentacle bullshit, he keeps making awkward skin contact with the victim. At the beginning of the game, before the rewind, he refused to hand out the character creation or rule booklets. I asked whether I had all my stuff returned to me in the shuttle, and he confirmed that I have everything. I think he might not be very good at deduction or foresight. I still have 11 unitoxin autohypos and a shitload of plasma grenades, as well as other goodies with potential for abuse. Obviously now is the time to start some fires. The autopilot docks us on a space station orbiting Eve and the hatch opens. Friend and victim hide. A robot enters the shuttle and asks me to come with. I follow it peacefully and they quickly get out before the hatch closes again. There is next to no security in all of these places apparently. So it tells me that I will be teleported to the surface of the planet. Guiding me by a massive window, I see a violet atmosphere with blue spots of ocean but mostly salmon pink landscape. And if I'm nice and compliant, my sentence will be shortened. It takes me to the teleportation room. It's Star Trek style with a control panel in front of some person-sized platforms. Robot tells me to get in. I say that I need to use the washroom. Meanwhile, Snively and his goons arrive on the station. The first thing he does is blow up the shuttle we came in on with some kind of heavy man portable blaster gun. He's a heavy weapon specialist and dual wields swords as a secondary thing. So obviously everyone feels the explosion ring throughout the station. Friend had taken the initiative and his character is leading victim around as they look for some proper transportation out of here. He's set to break out of here tonight. The moment this occurs, Dirk Falcon quick draws his blaster and unloads onto the console. I roll and fumble hard. My blaster is jammed, but it's alright. I have another. I quick draw that and unload the console on full auto, which my blaster is apparently capable of. I roll poorly and spray everything in front of me, including the robot. This sets off an alarm. 
I leave a grenade by the console and run like hell. Friend and victim are treated to a scenic route of the facility. They find a chamber full of female shapes, oh suspended God. peacefully in transparent half tubes. Hey, you know this is not going to go well. I know. Each one is an exemplar of a female shape, as seen only in porn cartoons. <laughs> Tiny waists, massive tits, half of them bloated from more pregnancy. Oh my god. Each one has a tiny text console in front of them, showing vitals and info. All of them seem to have male names. Apparently this is where they kept those that have survived their sentence on Planet Eve. I guess as much. Meanwhile, Dark Falcon runs through the facility, having unjammed his blaster. A few more ineffective robot guards fall to auto fire. A blast door drops from the ceiling but Dirk is quick enough and slides under to see the one up ahead has already dropped, trapping him. Apparently Snively has a bead on my position. I don't know how. No convenient vent shafts are visible so I decide to make my own. Dirk fires his grappling hook into the ceiling and yanks out a panel. The whole place is composed of metal tiles much like most video game portray spaceships and see a crawl space with pipes running the length. It's not wide enough to crawl through, but I don't need to. Dirk climbs in and pulls the tile up after him, doing this entirely through notes. GM tells Friend that they are pretty lost. Friend asks how big the station is. GM says it's big. Fucking huge. Half the size of Earth's moon. <laughs> well, fuck. Apparently there are floors after floors of former men now sporting tits and status, oh <laughs> as well God. as everything they need to moderate traffic to and from the planet. Mate, does this guy make like a weird trap fetish? <laughs> <Space station laughs> Fucking, I, I, don't I don't know. Friend figures that if they are to be lost, they should be lost together. He turns on his wrist computer tracker, which shows him the position of everyone on our team. They see Snively on the station, and me as well, and take little time getting to me. The whole sector's alarms are going crazy. Robots attack them, but power swords can deflect blasters and stun shots as victim demonstrates by reenacting the opening act of Phantom Menace. <laughs> Soon they come to a blast door, which also gets Phantom Menaced, while Friend deactivates the alarms from a security console, adding system shock to the blend of his crazy setting. On the other side of my little cage, Snively has a hacker from his pet attack squad force, the doors open. They enter the section at the exact same time. Snively makes a threat and a pass at victim. He says that they're on the same side. He tells her to come with him and she won't get hurt. He has a seriously huge gun and a dozen armed assholes behind him. She tells him to eat a cock, so to speak, and friend drops to the ground. They open fire with stun blasts and the single greatest action moment of the game occurs. Victim rolls very low, deflecting all the shots. Most of Snively's trips are down, especially after his gun's AOE blast was reflected in his face. He had a force field that was utterly unscathed. He fires again on full auto and she managed to deflect only one shot, knocking out the rest of his men even though, once more, the blast is centred on him. But the rest bombarded her, and she fumbles the save to resist stun. At this point, Dirk, who had been hiding in the ceiling, kicks his way out of the ceiling and drops <laughs> and drops the asshole like a bear. Snively fumbles his dodge and is beamed on the head by the metal plate. Dirk fumbles his attack and sprawls across him, losing his knife. The conflict is suspenseful as fuck and rife with shitty rolls on both sides. I manage to get on top of him but fumble wrestling. He rolls to get up and aims his gun at me. I manage to grab it and eject his power feed. He starts kicking me. I grab his legs and throw him down, then one more failed to pin. He manages to pull a pin on a stun grenade. He's immune to. Due to force fail, but I save perfectly. Still not regretting those resistance in the least. And fumble getting my own blaster out, and it goes across the room. He manages to get the gun between me and him, and pulls the trigger on his last charge, but it jams. I finally pin his ass to the floor and friend gets his first aid kit and sedates him. We wake up victim whose chest is exposed by the blasting tearing off her top. Wait, what? Why? What? What? Why? 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 Why is that necessary? That's not necessary. It was, it's really <clears throat> awkward. Let's be serious. Like, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe <laughs> I'm too just... conservative. No, but I just Maybe, don't, I don't want this in my games. Sometimes, like, you know, people argue with me in the comments about this shit all the time. Like, oh, you don't like sex in games. Eh. It's like, no, I just don't like want to go play sex with fucking a loaded neck boots. <laughs> like, I'm sorry to say, I'm just not I, No, I'm that. not, no, it's so it's awkward. It's too personal for me. Yeah. 
Like, fuck, I don't know. Let's keep going with this, but this is absolute big relief. Fucking weird. I use my jacket to restore her decency and use snively space handcuffs to restrain him. We drag him along with us as we search the station, eventually finding the inner workings and popping robots left and right. The rest of Snively's attack squad comes after us, but Victim flexes her digital muscles and drops a blast door, and I recommend welding it shut with her sword. We proceed further into the station and find the gravity drive as well as a few computers. Victim and Friend get on the job. Friend manages to pull up a few floor pans and Dirk rushes with Snively's drugged up corpse on his shoulder and loads him into an escape shuttle, sets it to land safely on the planet and begins to strip him off his equipment. I swap wrist computers just to spit in his face and stick a unitox into his belt. At about this time, Victim has shut down the gravity and power too early. Fuck. Friend had finished resuscitating the various convicts. I return in time to yell at them and get everyone moving, but not before getting Victim to set the station to adjust its course and get pulled into Eve's atmosphere. Until this point, the GM was actually rather happy with us. He was having fun. Laughing when we were. He stopped laughing once we herded some of the nude men turned women into one of the fighter ships Snively followed us on, and I began to dispense unitox to those that were not fully transformed and early in pregnancy. I actually can't believe you put that factory in this game like, at all. I can't yeah. get over that. I really can't get over that. <laughs> See if I showed up and someone was like, oh yeah, like there's this here like factory of like, you know, we're making all these... Men like- turned women and they're pregnant? What okay. Okay, good GM. <laughs> Snively got royally pissed out of character and stomped off after swearing at me some more, as he has been from the moment we sedated him. Snively is actually the most normal looking of all of us. He's not really greasy, on the skinny side. Looks more like an IT guy than a geek. However, his fish lips twist into the most hideous of shitty grins when he's doing something sexual. This gives away his true nature. I think he had his eye on Victim's character since early on. We lift off, moments before the station's boosters kick in, and the escape pods launch. Friend states that a collision that big, especially if the station shields keep it from disintegrating, will probably wipe out all life on the planet. GM's not happy at all. Suddenly, Tolfag appears and heals us. He's on a personal cruiser or something, a ship bigger and better than ours. He tells us to give up and pay for our space crimes. Actually, he singles me out. Apparently, I'm the only one who committed anything serious. He tells the others to turn me over or they will suffer with me. If what I did was wrong, then there's no right in the galaxy. I state, putting on my one-liner voice. If you want me to answer for what you call crimes, I will. Gladly. But first you have to prove yourself in single combat against me. This is childish. Tolfag replies in a haughty voice. It's the only way. I'm going down, fighting one way or another. Friend rolls to see if there are legal precedents for this, and apparently trial by duel is still legit according to space law. Very well. Step into the teleportation pad and we will beam you over for a duel. I scribble something on a note card, then state that I step through out loud. He actually likes it when Snively pulled this shit. I pass him the card, as he describes, that once I arrive on the bridge. Card says that I pull the pin on every grenade I have. My plasmas, Snively's high explosive and EMP grenades before I step on the teleporter and turn on my pressure field generator and Snively's high grade force field, Dirk Falcon is a hero. Not an honourable man. (laughs) He takes off his spider harness as he is peppered with stun rounds and lobs the whole deal at Tolfuck. There is more than enough ordnance there to level the bridge. GM is sweating and looking oddly constipated, looking for a way out. I state that Dirk will quick draw a blaster and shoot Tolfuck's arm if he goes for a teleporter. GM states that there will be a few rounds before the bombs detonate. We roll and I manage to catch a 20 on his roll before he grabs the die and looks at me like nothing happened. I roll and get a 9. Since it's a roll under system, luck is in my favour. I smirk at him and tell him that I saw what he rolled. We argued. Fine, roll to hit. I roll well enough to zap the thing out of his hand, but not to destroy it. He goes for it, and I go for him. This is why I take fucking wrestling. Tolfuck and Dirk struggle as the cockpit erupts around them. GM drops his dice and closes his laptop. He takes a really deep breath and lets it out, eyes dramatically closed. Megan, honestly, this sounds like the jizz's (laughs) pants. 
Let me describe him again, as many of you believe he is a fat ass. Jelly GM is not exactly a huge guy. He looks more like a skinny, tall person whose muscles had suddenly turned to fat, like a clammy, molten wax figure. He's pale, clean-shaven and generally slug-like. Definitely a rare but not too unusual body build. I thought you guys could have been more mature about this. Especially you, my name. But no, you just had to go and kill important NPCs and fuck up my story. I was seething, but didn't have the energy to have an outburst like I usually do in these situations. Listen, Pete, what a story. You want us to travel the galaxy knocking up women? The first thing you tried with the victim is to get her pregnant. Isn't that right? RPGs are about story and adventure. Most of all, about fun and playing a character. At no point do fetishes come in. You based your whole setting around fetishes. That was the gist of what I said. I know you guys wanted me to burn or punch his shit. But let's get realistic here. He interrupted me many times while I spoke. And we had a back and forth. He said he wanted to run a mature game for mature players who would tolerate his world. I said that he wanted to get his jollies by impregnating (laughs) make-believe women left and right. Victims stayed silent, but friend chimed in with a, Seriously, man, there are way more pregnant women than there needed to be. I just wanted to run around and have space adventures. It's my world. I'm sorry that you're not mature enough to enjoy it. Snively is mature enough, I take it. He runs around giggling as he fucks chicks. That's literally his whole goal. It's just how he plays his character. Haven't you noticed that everybody else keeps leaving once they get knocked up? Gender flipped or tentacled? This isn't maturity, it's smut. Simple as that. We play anyway and you punish us for avoiding it? At this point he had packed up his dice and slapped the bag onto the table in a limp wrist gesture of fury. Pursed his lips and gave me a hard look before looking around the table. Snively was back. So, who wants to keep playing? I shrugged. Everyone said yes. So, my name... Dies from exposure. Tall fuck contacts you and says that the criminal is now... Bullshit! Bullshit. Friend didn't look happy. No, Snively's force field could casually resist explosions and he had a pressure field. There's no way he could have just died like that. And no way tall fuck could have survived unless he had something like that. Friend is not quite a real lawyer but more of a champion of plausibility. He reacts violently when things don't make sense to him and hand-waving is his bane. He argues back and forth with GM. GM's primary argument is, I say so, my game, deal with it. Friend is no longer happy. Victim says that she just wants to play, and not get pregnant. (laughs) She says that she was having fun, deciding running around the space station, trying to rescue me. I tell her I'm sorry for blowing up the game, because she looks pretty sad and annoyed. GM says that they can suck it because it's his setting or something to that effect as he packs up. I give him a middle finger and say, fuck your fetish trash. (laughs) And then another middle finger. You degenerate. Yeah. That is a thing I actually did. I'm not quite as good at dramatic one-liners as Dirk. Friend drops his dice and leans back, blowing out a space sigh. Just then, I smell a familiar scent of cigarette smoke waft in from the front of the store. Okay. That was a bit of an embellishment for dramatic purposes. I actually realised Smokey was in the store when I heard him yell at the cashier for selling him steel sun chips. He walked to the back of the store, sliding around Jelly GM and Snively as they were getting out where the tables are and greeted us. I didn't expect him to be there. He asked what we were up to and Friend and I filled him in. Fuck, you were playing his game? (laughs) I thought I warned you. But he congratulated me on blowing up the GMPC. Actually, it was a great session until the end. I killed Snively and we crashed the space station into Eve. Yeah, I was a total Jedi, victim added. Fucking Eve, he swore but laughed. I ended up there when I gave his game a try. Just walked out the moment I grew tits. <laughs> <laughs> he sat down where Pete was sitting and cracked open a Coke and unzipped his bag. So he let you keep your sheets? I think he forgot. Dramatic exit and all. Cool. He began to hand out blank gurp sheets and tossed the character book on the table. I'll take over from here. So you're floating around in space after blowing up the Alliance Retard's flagship. Your field is good for, what, a half an hour? Better haul ass inside. And then we had a great gaming night.
Big reps to big smoke. <laughs> I know, big smoke coming in to save the day. You know, I think this is the first time we've ever done a horror story where it actually works out in the end. Yeah. Like, they actually kind of get, like, a happy ending and they can continue playing. Because, yeah. like, it does sound like a pretty cool... I w- I haven't, I've never played, like, a science fiction setting before. Uh, the most I've ever done is I played one Star Wars game once and I thought it was really cool and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. So it's something I would personally go... I, I, Without the... Get, get, the, get, get rid the of the, the, trap the traps fact. and the impregnation and, then, and the tentacles. And, and all that. It sounds like an okay game. It does. Because, like, see, whenever they were fighting your man, like, the start of that one. Yeah, the it sounds starship, really good. Actually, I, I could get into that. I, I think I could really enjoy yeah. that. So thank God for Smokey. Like, at least Smokey was like, mate, you played his game. <laughs> Why? <laughs> mate, I, I got out there whenever I started going tits <laughs> oh my god that's hilarious but look i hope you guys really enjoyed this one because i think this is the best like horror story we've done in quite a, a while, while now yeah. yeah the last good one i think we did like this was do you remember the one about the settlers of Catan? oh yeah the, oh god the, oh that was a horrible one yeah. if you haven't seen that one i'll link to it down below it's worth a watch because i think it was really good yeah so look as always guys hope you guys enjoyed remember like comment subscribe all the other good shit and we'll see you in the next video bye